uh, Europe, and then back to, to the States. Anyway, on December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor Day, I was 17 years old, and I was attending a church rally in the big announcement about uh, the attack on Pearl Harbor. And so I figured I never will have to go, you know. I'm too young. The war be over with for you. Well, anyway, I graduated from Lincolnville High School, which is a little town on US 56 between Marion and Harrington. And I graduated from high school in 1942 there, and then I decided that I was going to attend uh, Emporia State. I was going to be a civic engineer, and I was going to build the Alaskan Highway from Alaska to Argentina. You know, that was a big goal. And uh, and but I uh, tell you, one day the football, uh, my brother also attended Emporia State. We were both were on the football team, and uh, when we went to play at Fort Riley football team uh, in 1942. Why uh, the whole team went down and took this Air Force test because it's going to be a big deferment. And I, I'm just being a freshman in college, I was going to be deferred four years, you know. And so, boy, that sounded good. Now, my brother, he was already over 18, he already enlisted, but he goes and talks to my parents into signing the papers so I get deferred four years. Well, uh, so I enrolled in Poria State, and uh, it was in my second semester, and here comes a letter from the government saying, <laughs> you're called to active duty on February the 23rd, and my brother was called to active duty, even though he had a year left of college, he went on the 19th of February. Oh, so oh, two of us oh, just oh. went right in, right, right away. Oh. So uh, I went... Time, time, time passed fast for that four years. That was the fastest four years of your life. <laughs> That's right. No deferment. Yeah. And, uh, and so I got sworn in Kansas City and went to Jefferson Barracks, Missouri, which was on Missouri River. And we lived in chicken houses. Those square chicken oh, yeah. houses, no stoves in. <laughs> and, uh, and it was in February. And it was oh, cold. God. And was it cold. <laughs> Then, after a, a year, uh, after a month of basic training there, I went to Carroll College of Waukesha, Wisconsin. And uh, they sent me five months to college there. And after five months, then I was called uh, to cadet classification in Santa Ana, California. And on the train, we went right through St. John. Go on, go on. Well, there we were already black from the smoke from the from the engines, you know. But then uh, I also met my mother at uh, at Newton uh, on the way through because I was closest to Marin, Marin County. But anyway, we ended up and uh, went to Santa Ana and got classified as a pilot. And my brother, who talked my parents to sign me in. He washed out because his eyes had defective <laughs> eyes, and uh, and so he, uh, he ended up in uh, radar training. But, but anyway, I was classified in 1943, and then I was assigned to the Hancock College of Aeronautics in Santa Maria, California. That's where I learned to fly that Stearman, that biplane, Stearman airplane, and. And I had a challenge learning to make crosswind landings with that. But uh, after I got that, then I went to Lemoore, Colorado, uh, Lemoore, California, and learned to fly the, what we call the Vaulting Vibrator. And, uh, and then the, they told me I was in an accelerated program. Uh -huh. And so uh, I uh, uh, I was in the second half of the basic training, I was taught to uh, fly the bamboo bomber, which was the reason they called bamboo bomber because it had canvas on the outside and all wood in the middle, you know. Oh, oh my but God. it had two engines on, you know. <laughs> well, anyway, in the meantime, Jimmy Doodlo, he took his B-25s off of the carrier in the 
Pacific and had uh, had 30 seconds over Tokyo, he bombed Tokyo. Well, and uh, so because of that, the uh, Air Force wanted a movie about 30 seconds over Tokyo. So all of us who were in the specialized training for B-25s in advance uh, didn't get to go because they took out 10 instructors out of Lamar, Colorado and sent them to Florida to make the movie 30 seconds over <laughs> Tokyo. <laughs> So right in the middle of the war. <laughs> and, and so, uh, 50 of us students didn't get to go for B-25 training in Lamar, Colorado. Oh. And so I got sent to Marfa, Texas. <laughs> and Marfa, Texas is the biggest town and the biggest county and the biggest state in the United States at that time. You know? <laughs> and uh, they had prisoners of war there, but there were no fences because you didn't walk away because you'd die of the water. <laughs> but anyway, uh, anyway, I got my wings and uh, there, uh, I flew the same airplane as I flew in basic. And got my wings there, so I knew I was going to get my wings because I, I already knew how to fly the airplane. Well, uh, so I got my wings in April of 1944. And I came home for a month, got a month's furlough. And I, and I, Marion County has Hillsboro in it. And while I was at Hillsboro, here were POWs walking around arm in arm with those Hillsboro girls oh. eating that hilltop ice cream, you know. Oh. And, and I was so mad, <laughs> I just couldn't stand it, you know, because of that. Well, anyway, I got over that. Uh, there wasn't a, I didn't have any uh, commander to call and to complain about, so I didn't do that. But anyway, uh, uh, that's mainly about that part of it. I look, uh, then I was assigned to fly B-17s. And do I have a B-17? Right here in front of you. Well, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. That's what I flew. And, uh, you might get it up. That, and that airplane was made in, in uh, 1935, and uh, and by 1942 and 43, you learned to fly. Uh, it had all the bugs out of it, it, it and uh, and so we had self-sealing gas tanks in the thing, and each engine had self-sealing oil tanks in it. And uh, I'll tell you about why it was important to us. Now, you, uh, Jim Hood down here, he got B-24s, but they, they didn't have them up to date like that one was up to date. And so we had a lot of safety factors and the thing. Uh, I went from Roswell, uh, I went to uh, Sioux City, Iowa, where I picked up my crew. And this is in the fall of uh, 44. And, uh, and uh, we did operational training, learning the flying formation. I remember on Thanksgiving Day, my crew was mad. They all didn't want to fly, do any flight on Thanksgiving Day. You know, this is America, you know. <laughs> well, anyways, but we had to go anyway. So as we taxied out and we're running up the engines, my co-pilot noticed a fire in the number four engine. Mm -hmm. And it's about a spot about that big, you know, but just to see that. So we called the fire department in the they came out there and they had to they chopped a, had to chop a hole in that tally to, to get the fire out. And, and so, uh, uh, we, uh, we, so we got another airplane. But then we got an old junky airplane that oh. had, had uh, real small brakes on it. They hadn't improved brakes on the, <laughs> this old plane. And, uh, but we went anyway and did our formation flying when we, when we got through with that. Why uh, we were right off the end of the runway with the brakes <laughs> oh. 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 So uh, that's uh, then after Sioux City, I went to Lincoln, Nebraska, and and uh, one thing I wanted to mention is when I was at Roswell, uh, New Mexico, learning to fly B-17, I flew a plane called Hell's Angels. Hell's Angel was a B-17 that was sent uh, to uh, the state from England from our bomb group, from 303rd bomb group, to sell war bonds. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Advertise sell war bonds. Well, anyway, 
I didn't think much about it when I flew it, but uh, after I went overseas, I only went overseas on the Aquitania ship, and uh, Aquitania was a sister ship to the Lusitania. Mm. But uh, anyway, it got us over there, and uh, it, in seven days we got to Liverpool. And what happens is I get assigned to Hell's Angels Bomb Group. Oh. See? Oh. Hell's Angels. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay. famous and, bomb group. And not knowing. And that was one of the uh, first three bomb groups of the 8th Air Force in England. And so it, had, it has all the records. And uh, the first night I was there, I met Lieutenant Stivers, who went through uh, the B-17 training with me at, at uh, Rosalind, Mexico. And he uh, says, I'm, my co-pilot wants to shoot night landings tonight. Why don't you come along and take a ride and learn the brownout? We didn't call it blackout, we called brownout, you know. And I said, oh, sure, we'll go. And so we piled in. And about the second landing, uh, his co-pilot hit the runway too hard and broke the landing gear back. Oh. One of the wheels was broken back. And so we had to do a crash landing, you know, on one wheel. And uh, and so we went in the, the brace position in the radio room to, for a, a crash landing. And the thing was, we thought the plane had already stopped, but it hadn't. So by the time we got up and started running for the back door to run out, then she whirled around like this. Oh. And then, then after we opened the door, I was the first one out of the back door. I landed into a mud puddle, right? <laughs> <laughs> runway on the big old mud puddle. Right? And guess, guess what? When I stood up, I got shot full of foam <laughs> on the fire truck. <laughs> That was my first night in the Eighth Air Force. So, but anyway, uh, that, uh, then the course, I won't talk my time up. No, 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 no I guess they'll let you talk, Emerson. They'll let you talk. Uh, so I flew, uh, get over there, and, and uh, well, the rule was you flew co pilot for the first five missions, and you fly first pilot. Well, I flew one mission as co-pilot. <laughs> then I flew ten missions in thirteen days, oh. one after another, no stop. The three day in between was uh, passed to London. So, so, uh, so that's the reason why. Where were you stationed over there? Oh, uh, Holdsworth, England, England, which is okay. about forty, about seventy miles northwest of London. That's where it was. Uh -huh. That's the 8th Air Force are pretty much north of London. The fighters were south of London, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, uh, so it, it was quite an experience. But that I I flew ten missions, and then my uh, navigator, who was older than I was, I said, "You understand? I was just twenty years old, you know, doing these things." And my, and my uh, navigator says, I want to be a lead pilot. And so he goes to the base with my commander, squadron commander, and talks that my crew to be uh, uh, a, uh, a special lead team of 13 planes. That's what you lead. And you get a Norden bomb site and you get all the extra in that lead plane. And so we took off two weeks to. Uh, do special training. We call it G-bombing. That's when you have two radio stations on the front line and one, you fought, you circle one, the other one you hack as you go across and you can drop bombs within 600 feet. And and so uh, we went, so I lost uh, two weeks of uh, flying, easy missions, so to speak. Uh, what did you do on the missions? Oh, I was a pilot. He's going to tell about yeah, that. Okay. Okay. I was the first pilot on, on those, and then lead pilot. You know, and and so, you know, it brings a, it reminds me how easy, how nice it was to be a pilot on, on a mission because you only went to war maybe four hours a day. The rest of the time, you come back to the base, you went to clubs, read your paper, <laughs> wrote letters, go to the movies, you know. And, and uh, so you just fought four hours and never thought about those poor infantrymen 
plowing in the mud down below us. But by the time we were there, it was, uh, uh, the, uh, we just had Germany left. The, we had shrunk all around Germany, Germany left. So another thing we did, we flew in uniform. You see the uniform I have on today? That's the way we flew. Because if we were shot down, we want to surrender to the war monk and be put in a prison camp. Because if you drop bombs in a city like Hamburg, the people would come out with pitchforks and baseball bats and kill you. Because you, you kill their home, I mean, you kill their children or ruin their home. And then, you know, it was very traumatic, very traumatic. So we flew in uniform to be identified by the German officers. And, and so that's uh, one of the things that we did. Uh, I flew 16 missions, 10 on the wing, and six lead missions. And uh, another thing that was interesting is a lead pilot with me was Warner Goring, who was a nephew of Hermann Goring, oh. uh, the leader of the German Air Force. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And and uh, if you know anything, some of the secrets you don't probably don't know, but there, there's a there was a uh, intelligence officer on his crew, and that intelligence officer had to carry a 45 in his boot for his first 25 missions. So if he ever took a B-17 to Germany, he used to shoot him before the plane hits the ground. Oh um, my! And, and but that never. But this Herman Goring, he was in Salt Lake City. I mean, this Warner Goring was in Salt Lake City, and then he's a brother of, his dad was a brother of, of Herman Goring, and, uh, and uh, he apparently they came over before, the, before World War II, you know, and, and he was as loyal as could be. After 25 missions, they trusted him. There was no longer a secret uh, person on his crew. Incidentally, Joe Lill from St. John was a secret one in the infantry. He followed somebody in the... In the, in the infantry, all the way through the Battle of the Bulge. Oh. Just, just inspect that guy. Well, let's see. Better, uh, I'm the only member of my crew alive. All mm. eight of them, all eight other members are deceased. Uh, my ball, none of my, uh, my ball gunners don't want to get any injury on my crew because uh, the one mission we uh, went was Hofstum Airfield, and uh, we went in at 22,000, and and, uh, and that's low for a B-17. And I uh, got eight direct anti-aircraft burst under my airplane, so it jumped eight times. And uh, I, I counted. I mean, my crew says they're 55, but there's another member of my crew says there's over 300 holes. And so, uh, 300 what? Three, uh, holes. Holes, holes in your plane. Holes oh, in holes the, oh my God. In the airplane. <laughs> but five of them went through the, the gas tanks, uh -huh. and uh, the, the gas tanks were self-sealing. Now you understand that there's no phosphorus shells on an aircraft shells, but there was on fighter plane shells. So a fighter shot you in the yes tank and the plane would explode. Right. Fighters did jump us once and there were three ME 109s came in this. They came across the, the French lines and, and jumped uh, uh, my squadron and there were three P-51s who was between us and the sun, 2,000 feet above us and the sun. Shut those down there. One, two, three, just like that. And uh, my radio operator was in the waist, and I heard we heard the guns going, and we asked him why he's going. He said, "Didn't you see those fighters go down?" <laughs> so uh, that's one of the things that happened uh, to us. Now I have I have two th over two thousand hours. Now I got sent. Is my is my time up yet? Mm -hmm. No, it's no. not. Oh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> We're going to have supper here. <laughs> well, um, um, I don't think you. Uh, <laughs> Jen's got no food for me. <laughs> I have over 2,000 hours flying time. Though. When you see us going out the door, that's when you get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 2,000 hours, Jen's got 300 more. Okay. Uh, 
what, when I, after the war, I, on, oh, the thing was that, Eisen, that uh, Eisenhower got mad at Patton because around April the 20th, Patton was uh, one day ahead of uh, telling Eisenhower where he was. And so our last mission, we bombed some of Patton's troops. Uh. And uh, nothing, nothing too bad, but that's, that was one of the problems Patton would do. If you know Jack Hearn from St. John, mm -hmm. he carried a, 50, uh, a 45 revolver, and he would hold up uh, tank trucks from the 7th Army. He was in the 3rd Army. He was Patton's 3rd Army. And uh, they would take gasoline away from the 7th Army and give them that. <laughs> <laughs> and bring it down to their oh, oh, God. And carry a gun to do that. So you said Patton was ahead of schedule? Oh, he, he, he wouldn't tell Eisenhower where he was. <laughs> you know, that's that just... That just Patton wanted to be the first one there. Mm -hmm. He didn't want anybody to stop him. Oh. <laughs> and uh, didn't he get in trouble with Eisenhower? Oh, Patton? sure, but that was, that's that's <laughs> Patton. Uh, what, what, see, it. so after the war, and I, I was the three hundred third bomb group. Uh, Hell's Angels group was immediately disbanded within five or six days after. A VE day, so I got sent over to Bury St. Edmunds, which is another B-17 field there in England, and uh, then we, then I got in the program of dropping Disney bombs. Disney bombs are a British bomb that were, uh, it's, a re it's a research, it wasn't something that uh, had been in place, but they were made. And so after the, the war, they wanted to see how these uh, Disney bombs uh, uh, would go because they were weighed 4,500 pounds and they had seven rockets in, in the tail end of them and they were designed to knock out underground factories in Germany. If you've been hearing about the Iran, they want to knock out the Iran nuclear plant. Well, they, they designed these stainless steel heads on, on the, the, these bombs and so Three of us uh, were, uh, three planes were assigned to drop these bombs in, in the revetments in France, which the Germans had built in. And they would penetrate 15 feet of concrete, okay. or 50 feet of earth, you know. And, uh, and so, uh, what happened was, the, uh, on this, one of these rockets didn't go off. And so the thing did, did, was not guided to the target, uh, and somebody went, went through a schoolhouse and was killed. You know, uh, this is after the war now, so so that project stopped. Yeah. So the name mm -hmm. Disney had nothing to do with no, Walt. Disney. No, okay. uh, Disney is just a stainless steel thing that okay. would go 50 feet before it would explode. Okay. And there were Germans had a lot of in aircraft mm -hmm. factories. Uh, incidentally, I. Uh, there, there was a mission that uh, that uh, we went in and ran low on gas. So we landed at a British airfield south of London, and so I called the, the base and said they wanted me to come to load up gas and come in there. Yet that night, said, no, no mission for the next day. So we stayed overnight at this British airfield, and. Uh, they were filmed. Uh, I went out. And I said I want the plane ready to go at nine o'clock next morning, and uh, they said, "Well, we'll have it ready to go at nine o'clock." We went out there, and they were pumping it with one of these engine things with, with six, three people on each side. And they were pumping gas into that plane, in my plane at that time. And so, uh, in the meantime, they scheduled another mission, and the guy side assigned to my position was shot down. Oh. And, you, oh, wow. and so you wonder how, you know, yeah. uh, how lucky you were. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, let's see. Well, I also, after the war, I got then uh, about after two months in England, I got sent to Munich, Germany, and I became the booking officer of all the military flights out of Munich. 
and I was there until July of 1946. And uh, then I then I got home and went into went into uh, KU and enrolled, and and, uh, and I got in September of 40, uh, 46. And I went to KU, and I met my first wife. <laughs> and then, uh, all the recruits out there, there's a lot of things that went on. You know, I, another thing is that uh, I, my office on Ludwigstrasse, the main street of Munich. Uh, I had my European Air Transport Service book in my office. I had six enlisted men for my staff and three fry lines and a, and a jeep driver, you know, or weapons driver, you know. And so I, 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 I was mean enough to insist that everybody speak English in my office. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, yeah, that, I think that's most. Uh, if anyone want to talk, uh, talk about the... Now, Emerson, the bookings office, what... Well, what booked all the... The fact is, a lot, of, a lot of German people would come to my booking office and says, I have secret way of building a diesel engine better than any other engine in Germany. And they would go, and I'd book them on the on my airline to Frankfurt, where the where the intelligence people were of the of the uh, Third Army, and that's 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 the reason why they would come here, and I knew about what they were doing. Huh. We also another thing that happened is the Russians were flying in from uh, Berlin on our airlines. And uh, our intelligence knew that these were secret agents of the Russians. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did, so my job was to book them in the Excelsior Hotel, and they would, and I'd call them, they'd book them in a special room that was bugged. And, yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 and uh, so we knew everything was going on. I mean, we'd even fly. They were recruiting Luftwaffe pilots under our noses, paying them $275 a month. Uh, to f fly for the Russian Air Force or fly for the Russian uh, airlines. So, I mean, our intelligence, uh, I, I never w was concerned about Russian intelligence, at, at least at that, that time. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, just a lot, a lot of things were going on. One, one time, uh, they, they, uh, I rode a passenger on a B-17 and, uh, and we flew to Vienna. And this captain who was of our bomb group, he went, to, he got drunk, and he stole the Russian jeep. And and the, his him and his crew members were selling packs of cigarettes with so full of sawdust to the Russians. Oh. <laughs> and, and and boy, we were really glad to get out of town. <laughs> Well, I tell you, the, I, I had the pleasure of flying a C-47 uh, on my last, on my 86th birthday at uh, Great Bend, and then I also flew a C-45. And my last, next to the last flight in the Air Force was on a C-45, and uh, the, the one of the landing gears wouldn't uh, you know, hung loose, and just flopping in the wind. And the controller, we couldn't see that, but the control tower said, I think you got a loose wheel. Oh. <laughs> and so this is about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So they made it fly until 7 o'clock to burn up all the gas. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then uh, came in, made a belly landing, and uh, came in on one wheel. And, uh, and, uh, and I, another thing, I had to land in the first half of the runway because it was a GCA. Uh, condition with the landing with instruments on the other half of the runway, and uh, and so uh, we came in and landed. Uh, and uh, luckily, I, when I, when the wing dropped down, hit the concrete, you know, the wing tip. I hit the brake and it collapsed into the Goodwill. 
and so I bellied it in at Estolf Runway, and uh, and uh, then I had uh, the co-pilot and I were only two aboard, and uh, this was a beach twin-engine plane, uh, AT-17 that we were flying, or C-45, and uh, and at that time, uh, 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 my co-pilot he couldn't get his seat belt on buckle it was too tight. <laughs> But I, but being the commander and chicken like I was, I went out first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and then, oh, and then, and then, and then the next thing I knew, I, I I didn't walk away from this landing. I ran away from this landing. You understand? Because we we didn't know. You never know you're going to have a fire. You know. Mm. But uh, but the thing about it is, I just about got killed with a darn. Fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> this is We're real uh, glad you're here today. <laughs> and, and and so uh, we, I had to take a confidence ride. That's standard procedure in the Air Force. You fly the next day. Oh, oh. Uh, so you have to do that. The you have to do day. that. Okay. And then the FBI checked the plane because he, because a bolt come loose and it, it wouldn't pull that gear down. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of ends my story for today. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, I have you said you were the last living member of your crew. crew. Mm -hmm. uh, have you gone to your reunions? Oh yes, uh, I went to most of my reunions. And Jan, uh, Jan too. But yeah. they have quit. They didn't have any, not the, enough the left in their the go, before, so they uh, canceled. Nine one one. We were in Washington D.C. Yeah. and we flew home that day. Oh my. From Washington D.C. Oh, was uh, we just got we, out of there. We just time. got out of there. Oh. And I can have breakfast here the next morning, and I saw that plane fly oh, and boom, oh, sex to me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, had we not left at that time, we would not have been able to leave for about a week. week. They said That's they right. would have two hundred dollars a day. They would have kept yeah, us yeah, all there in the hotel. We could. We wouldn't been able to leave. <laughs> Washington D.C. Baltimore. Oh, oh, uh, Emerson, about you know we we all know about you know, Hitler, you know, the villain, but in relationship to that, and you're in the service, and then the war is ending, you know, well, what, how, what was the feeling there, you know, when you found out that the war yeah. opened? The, the, the funny part about the, this war is we knew very little about Hitler killing the Jews. Very yeah. little. Okay, yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. And, and uh, why, I don't know. Yeah. In fact, there's one mission, I think we bombed a prisoner war camp or, or a camp. Maybe had American troops in it. My, my navigator and bombardier, they said, let's go between these thunderheads and drop these bombs. We don't want to take them home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we went through the clouds here, I saw these barracks lined up in rows. Oh, there. Okay. Now, See, they're, they're, that was the sad thing about pilots. They did not know what damage they were doing yeah. down fact, below. Most of my bombs, they didn't know the I damage. had no hang-ups about the war because most of my bombs went through clouds. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. see. In a, and the one raid, Allison raid, we did see a train pulling out of this town about the size of St. John. And we bombed the tail end of the, of the train. Oh, off. But the fighters got the front end. Oh, dear. We came in later and got nothing. in. Uh, I'm not, and I, another thing that I saw was there was a, another town like St. John, maybe a little bigger. There was a, there was a, uh, we, the thing was the target was covered up, so we had target of opportunity. And we had already dropped our bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but another bomb group we were flying along beside, there was a, uh, there was a uh, hospital train in. And you could see the red squares on the top of the, of the cars. There were about six or eight uh, cars there. Mm -hmm. And then they just dumb bomb group. They dropped bombs on that train. What do you think? Wiped the town flat because it's full of ammunition. Oh, oh. really? Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Well, when you were in the war, then you were you had to stay in Germany a year after. And you, would you meet German people who really didn't like you because of what we did to them? 
Well, I often no, wondered no, about no, that. No, he no, lived no, right in Munich. Me what the, what one frog I can tell me. He says, how could you being, have your grandparents warn in Germany and drop bombs on your relatives? Yeah, you know? that's she true. She couldn't understand that, but she was a real Nazi. Yeah. She was trained in it. Her father was a, build, a bridge builder on the Autobahn, mm -hmm. and uh, she really ha loved Hitler, yeah. but the other two didn't. Can't imagine. What was the Autobahn? That's the four, four lane highway. Yeah. That's what Eisenhower desired. Yeah. Desired, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's how can we go? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's yeah. a speedway, isn't it? Hmm? The speedway, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, yeah. Then you can drive uh, on the Autobahn. You can drive two hundred miles an hour. When 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 I was went to Germany, that was the thing that really you, you really scared because well you know we had laws about uh, what the speed limit is uh -huh. here in the United States and everybody was just going two hundred miles an hour. Yeah, right. you know? <laughs> you know, no. We were going like turtles. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. See, another thing that Hitler did, he took the Autobahn, you know, there was four lane, yeah. then he would put concrete on the straight pass of the auto lane and, and uh, make air, uh, uh, runways oh, for oh, airplanes oh, out, oh, out of the oh, Autobahn. Yeah. And then he, they would move their planes from one force to another beside the Autobahn, you know, mm -hmm. so they wouldn't be in the same place. Yeah. And of course, another thing too, I. The ME 262s is the German jet. Okay. And when, and I saw uh, seven German jets try to shoot down a, piece, a straggling P 17 and they couldn't shoot it down. Oh. Because the B 17 could go faster? No, it or? was because the, it was an instructor training six students. Oh. And they all came in at the four o'clock position, which is that. Position mm -hmm. from you, and they would chop their throttles, shoot, and give her the gun instead of coming through at 500 mile an hour. Mm -hmm. And see, I got the, uh, I went to Augsburg Airfield in Germany after the war, and there were 17 ME 262s had their nose wheels uh, wiped out. Because if you know anything about flying airplanes, when you pull your throttle back, the, the propellers act as an air brake. And a jet, you pull the throttle back, there is no air brake. So they run off the end of the runway and wipe their nose wheels out. Mm. Hmm. Did you feel like while you were in the service that you were serving four hours a day and then you had the rest of the time free, did you learn anything about where you were at in the country in England? Oh, or? sure. We knew we knew exactly where we were at all the time. We had navigators that told us where we were at. You know. So you you really saw a lot more than a lot of people did that were in the oh, service yeah. because oh, of yes. where you Very were. Very much. Yeah. We had a court that, uh, of course, uh, there is, there's things that happen when you're on a mission. We were going on a mission one time, and here comes this English-speaking voice, very clear. And he says, "What well, is the mission today? I missed briefing." Oh. And he and he said that three times, and finally somebody in our group says, "You dang kraut, get off the air!" <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course, another thing the Germans did—they had a corridor over the Netherlands. That they just had one anti aircraft gun in, just one. And then he would get one B 17 probably every, every mission. But the reason why they had this corridor is so when the, the, the tur planes turned towards their target, they would alert fighters in that area. Be looking out for us. Hmm. You know, I remember one time, uh, my second mission was Nuremberg, and uh, I, my co-pilot was flying formation and formation then. And I, I was watching, there, here comes the anti aircraft going in front of us, shooting, exploding, right at eye level. And there, the flight shells go umbrella up, you know, so they to get you. But this was the eye level, and I was watching, is it getting closer to me or further away from me? 
and it never got any closer. It stayed right there, about 50 feet in front of us. You're lucky you came back home, it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so many. But your whole crew came home. Oh, yeah. My ball gunner is the one that got the, could have got the Purple Heart. Because when we got those uh, eight bursts under our airplane, one of them went through his sight glass, and the, and the sight glass shattered, and they cut his hands mm -hmm. through his gloves, the flying glass. Oh. And, uh, and so he, he was deserving the Purple Heart, but that's the ball gunner. Now, what is the ball gunner? Is that the one down below? Yes, yeah, that's so. the bottom. Okay. And uh, and it's uh, it's sure death if you can't get that ball uh, thing to roll up for landing and you belly land. So how many people were on a plane like that, a B-17? How many were on uh, your uh, Well, there was nine and they went down to eight. So that would be pilot, co-pilot, engineer, navigator, bombardier, bombardier, radio operator. Radio operator. Now, actually, uh, when we did, we also did an, another bombing. Uh, it was by radar, and so we would have an extra, extra, uh, an extra bombardier. He but he dropped by radar. Mm -hmm. I, you did have radar then, yeah. Yeah, okay. but that's just, just the beginning. certain planes. Okay. Just the lead planes had radar. So it was one of your crew members that wanted to be the lead plane, and that's... Well, he, he was a real navigator. <laughs> yeah, a real navigator. <laughs> he yeah. navigated that, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and, uh, and he was five years older than I was, and... Uh -huh. He let me know he was going to take orders from a goddamn pilot. <laughs> <laughs> a, kid, a kid pilot. A kid pilot. A kid yeah, pilot. A pilot. A kid 20 pilot. years old. Uh, did, did that cause you very many problems? So? No. no. <laughs> he always cleaned it. He ordered the tail gunner to clean his guns. You know. I says, everybody in this uh, crew cleans their own guns. You know, and, and that's when he made that statement. That's when he got after you. <laughs> well, that, that took courage on your part. Emerson. Well, to, yeah, yeah, your crew is pretty much equal yeah. on, a, on, a, mm -hmm. on a flight crew. They have to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he evidently found his place eventually. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, found another pilot? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Well, now, Emerson, you said your group doesn't get together anymore, but I've heard of other groups that the children. Um, yeah, yes. Carry on the group. It could be our group formed an organization for the children, but I have never heard from them uh, since it's been formed. I, I just wondered, but I have a, a friend in Wichita that she always went uh, and she carried on. It was her father in law that was served in the service, and uh, she's organized get-togethers before. This is the patch that yes. I'm wearing. Oh, yeah. okay. And this is a picture that is in the Smithsonian Institute oh. of our bomb group. It was one of the first ones. And uh, the thing I, I need to say is that uh, our the 303rd bomb group is the one that has the most uh, the greatest records. Do remember. you have a picture of your crew? Yeah, right here. There's a picture of the crew right there. And oh, yeah, Emerson. there they are. Yeah, and Emerson, yeah. tell them which one you are there. Well, let us see. I know we can. Can you pick that out? <laughs> can, you, can, you, can you tell which one's the tallest? <laughs> Were you the tallest? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He's on the standing on here on the right side, standing. Who's the and guy that has... The co is right beside me. Where's that guy that uh, told you give you always orders all the time? That's, well, he's the only one that's got that cap on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. But I think. But, but uh, I was going to give you the numbers. We had uh, we they lost seventy nine enemy. Uh, they apparently shot down seventy nine planes, and the bombs dropped was twenty six thousand three hundred and. 46 tons, 26,346 tons. 
Uh, they shot down 378 airplanes and probably shot down another 104. Now, Emerson, when you say they, are you talking, is it just the, your plane my, or my, my, your my bomb group? group. Your my group. bomb group. Your group. Okay. And how many planes were in your group? Yeah, well, usually you had uh, around 60 uh, total, oh, okay. total planes. But they were in groups. You were in groups. Well, we had squadrons. There squadrons, were four squadrons. Yeah. Four squadrons. Okay. Oh, when you go on a mission, there were there would be thirteen planes. I was a squadron lead, and I'd be in charge of thirteen planes. Okay. And uh, and and sometimes the, we would have uh, the fourteenth uh, plane, and it was it would uh, scurry up the bomb group ahead of all the planes. So it had a camera aboard, so the pictures were all developed. So when you came back from your mission. They would brief you. You, they would, you would brief the briefers what, what, you, what these pictures meant to them. And incidentally, two of my missions, I was the camera plane, and I dropped pamphlets. Um. <laughs> two missions. That's one, one of my first ten missions. I dropped pamphlets, mm -hmm. and we call. One of them is, this is the end, I remember that, in oh. and, I, and, of course, the bad part is that I had this scrapbook of all this, and I took it to the library, and they had 30 days showing off of them, and they lost that red book, and oh. they lost my strikes, and also oh. I had the six instruments off of ME-262 German jets. They were taken to... Oh. And that's, oh. that's, well, anyway, I want to say uh, we, they lost, our, our group lost 761 aircraft. Uh, and we had 817 planes killed in action. And 729 prisoners of war. And... Uh, uh, 67 walked out of Germany, uh, walked out of France. Through, walked out? Yeah. They had with, been prisoners? Without, yeah, they didn't get captured. They didn't get captured. Uh, there were 64 dis ditched and dis uh, rescued, that's uh, probably North Sea, and uh, 29 Swiss and internees. Sometimes the planes would land in Switzerland. Oh instead of uh, tr trying to make it back through France. Well, do you think we got about as much as we could get out of this? Oh, it's fascinating. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. interesting. Well. I just can't get over the fact that you were hell's angels when you were <laughs> learning, and then you got to be... Got to fly. That's wonderful. And that didn't mean anything to me at the time. No, but now... I'll tell you what, <laughs> uh, all these guys that were in the Hells Angels Air Force, they really didn't like it when these motorcyclists... Oh, yeah. Oh, that that they they were very upset. upset. Well, they degraded you. Yeah. They sure did. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. And, of course, I have pictures of all my missions, you know. Mm. So what was the insignia on your plane? Did you have a beautiful... Red angel? tail. Red tail. Okay. See, you see that? C in the middle, red train. Oh, yeah. Okay. Where is the C? I don't see it. Let's see here. I think I got another a better picture of it. Right C in here. the middle of that triangle. So the A underneath the wings on this, does that stand for No, that's, a, that's a, another group. That's another group. Oh. So how many groups were there in the war? I mean, how many? You talked about oh. you, had, you had four squadrons. About group. 80. Uh, 80. 80 groups, yeah, but they, that would include B-24s. Also, uh, you know, it, it just seems almost miraculous to me that they could build that many planes right. that quickly. Uh, that, only cost, uh, that plane only cost $225,000. Built in Wichita. Built in Wichita and uh, Lockheed and Lancaster. So when a plane now flies that's not over, very much money compared mm -hmm. to what oh, a plane no. does. Oh, no. How do you know if it's American or someone else? Okay. Good point. I was just going to talk about coming back from the mission. One time, a B-17 of another insignia came up and flew up right beside me. 
and they came so close I could see their German helmets. Oh. <laughs> wow. But you can tell from the plane. Did he wave at you? It was a B-17. It's a B-17. But, uh, I mean, there was no marking on it. To yeah, it was. It was a yellow tail with an L on it. How did they get that B-17? They, they probably shot it down. Or, and then they took and it over. And captured it. Yeah. yeah captured it. And, and the, thing, the thing is, what's so suspicious about it, it was so clean. Uh -huh. <laughs> See, our planes had dirt and sun on them and everything. Because they flew every day. Yeah. And it was so clean. It was so clean. <laughs> but they didn't shoot at you? Or? No, but all you could, all the guns in the squadron, I could, they were pointing were right, at right at him. They knew. Did he oh, speak my. to you? Huh? Did he speak to you on the radio? No. No, no. he didn't. <laughs> Why didn't they shoot then? Why didn't they shoot? Well, it, they you, you don't know for sure and that, yeah. who they were, but we, we could tell by the helmets. They were German oh, helmets. Oh, good thing. Mm -hmm. But there were no stripes or stars or anything underneath that you could just tell somebody flying over was a... No, you wouldn't get... Yeah, it'd be just like that underneath. underneath. But, See, the but it wouldn't have any numbers. Have the numbers are on the tail. Yeah. Both sides of the tail. Yeah. Hmm. Well, how did they decide when you were called into duty to... Uh, did they give everybody a test and decide you can become a pilot? Or how, how did that all happen? Well, I don't like to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, uh, the, my observation was that all the Jews and all the New Yorkers became navigators and bombardiers. Uh, none of them made pilots. Uh, Interesting. Well, very, very Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange? And, uh, and, there, and uh, I can tell you, there was, we had a pilot who was Jewish, and he, he aborted 16 missions. Oh. Oh, in other words, he, when he came to the lines, he'd turn around and come back. Mm. Oh. And so they took him off. Now, now, That's oh. interesting. Huh? Did they think that the uh, Midwesterns... Well, they were better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, they had, they had more tenacity. They were pretty good farm boys. They yes. liked those farm boys. Uh -huh. They didn't know the word. They excelled at everything. Yeah. 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 And their airfields are all out here too. You, you look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Emerson, you have gained a lot of weight because I don't know how you ever got into that little plane. <laughs> <laughs> the back door. <laughs> well, this has been fascinating. Thank you oh. for your preparation. Yes, yes uh, Emerson. Right. Well, I have uh, these books are for my uh, my history mm -hmm. and. Uh, Do you have one of those for each of your boys? No. No. Let's see. All every mission is in here that I flew on. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, the whole group. We had four squadrons. You you picked that up as you went along. Right? No, no. No, you did this after you. Did somebody put that together for you? I did. In, in, I put it to you. Okay. It used to be a little four H. But see, this <laughs> book is a lot of it is a duplication of this book. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, on the internet, you can find where every mission that I flew. Oh, uh, really? Every mission I flew. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, see? The, yes. I was telling where it was. See, right, right there, and then you get, uh, I underlined shields, but this is mm -hmm. how, how the squadron looked. Emerson, I was telling Mert this afternoon as we were driving back from Great Bend, how every time we would have bridge, Rick would hang around the edges waiting to ask you questions about <laughs> World War II. <laughs> he was enamored with Emerson. If Emerson was coming, Rick was there with questions. And Emerson was always gracious and would answer. <laughs> yeah, see, Tell him something. Uh, first, I flew mainly uh, one airplane for the first 10 missions, you know, the same plane. It had 75 missions on it. And there's all kinds of patches. See, that what they do, a sharpener will go through it, they would patch it, put a little square <laughs> patch over it. You know. oh. Well, the, this... Uh, 516, the plane that I flew, with 75 missions, you know, if you wanted a piece of armor plate, any place on the airplane, the next morning you'd be there. 
a quarter inch armor plate. And so there's so much armor plate on this plane, it could hardly keep up with the oh. formation. Oh, oh. 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 Yeah. oh my goodness. <laughs> 75 mission, yeah. yeah. Oh, what do you know? And, uh, not, uh, it was called My Darling, but it's not a very pretty name, you know. It had a picture of a gal on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. I wonder. Well, I noticed there's a gal on this one, too. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, you can see it. I yeah. can see that. Oh, yeah. I, I should show you a picture of that. Oh, I don't see her in it. It's towards the front, I think. Yeah, right there. Let's see another one. Why didn't you pay attention? I mean, I looked at it, but I didn't pay attention. Okay. I had you just put it in Incidentally, this is a thing appeared in the Kansas Bar Journal. And this is written by Matthew Keenan, who is Larry Keenan's son. Okay. And, and he gives stories about 20 of us here. Oh, Emerson. Have you gone to uh, the college where they were taking yes, the histories? Yes, I've, I've been the there. Histories? But I, I never left in. Anything. But you did. Did they take your verbal history? No. 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 Because I, I, I know they were doing that at one point in time. Audrey Bradley was in law school with me, but a year ahead of me. Oh. See, after I came back to KU, I, I, I kept flying in the troop troop carrier mm -hmm. outfit. That's where I learned to fly the C forty seven. Oh. And the C forty five. And a T-6, also a single engine fighter, too, you know. And uh, Aubrey Bradley also went with me. We were in the same uh, squadron there. And uh, the thing unique about him was he there was only one B-17 that, that got shot down the last mission of the war, and it was Aubrey Bradley. Oh. And they had to stay in a haystack one night, and then they, oh. They messed around, then they got sent to a prison camp, and then they, then they finally got released, you know, four or five days. But my, the, the troop care outfit that I was in at, at Olathe, when I was going to law school, they got called in the Korean War, got called to active duty. And I was supposed to go, but I had six months left of law school, and I asked to be deferred. And uh, I got a deferment. The rest of all, I had to go to London. Oh. And Audrey Bradley, while he was standing there at the air base in London, two Navy jets uh, collided over him and they spilled gasoline all over him. And he was, oh, his, his skin oh. uh, was emasculated, you know, oh. by burns, you know. Oh. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, and then, then they discharged him four months later because they didn't want to take care of him. Oh, I um, bet that's right. <laughs> and, and, and they had the, and Bob Colston, another classmate of mine, uh, went to bat for him and sued the, uh, the Air Force and uh, took care of him. Oh, but there I am. See, there's the picture. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. Matthew Keenan. Well, that was great that he could do that. Thank you. Very much. Oh, amazing. I can think all kinds of stories. Oh, yeah. See, that's why we're hungry here. When, when, I got to, when I went to the second air base in, in England, they gave me a brand new B-17. And I had a beautiful woman along the way. Oh. And it said, just once more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, you guys have a program. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the commander will always flew my airplane. <laughs> <laughs> a brand new one. Oh, brand new B17. Since Emerson had so many stories, now there's your theme for next year. What is that a continuation? Continuation. <laughs> <laughs> Emerson every <laughs> meeting. Except for, that, for, except for that one time, you know, for Kendra. Yeah, uh, okay. There's your problem. No problem. Oh, we have really, we have really this enjoyed is, yeah. this year because we've learned more sure. about World War II and and uh, some of us have, have memories, but... Yeah. One thing I want to say is, you know that the ground crew stayed there three and a half years of the, of the Hells Angels. They never got to go home. No yeah. one. But the, ground, but the air crews did. Oh. But I want to say that 303rd Bomb Group is the most efficient organization I've ever known in my lifetime. Total dedication.
Real Just thing. like I told you about putting armor plate on. Yeah. If I said I want a new engine on, I don't think it's running right. Next morning there'd be a new engine on there. Oh, oh my. Only time the ground crew would sleep is when we were on a mission. At eight hours we were on the mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Emerson, may I ask you to make sure I have it right? You were in the 8th Air Force. That's right. And you were in the 303 Bomb. Bomb Group. 303 Bomb, bomb Group. Okay, thank you. Yes. No. And that's the Hells Angels. Uh -huh. And we were the first three, one of the first three over there. And we, even though we were the first three, we have all, all the numbers. Emerson, Vernon tells about flying in uh, Air Force planes, and they had very little uh, padding on the inside. It was just the skin right. over a... That's the reason why they can make them so cheap, you know. It wasn't, it, it wasn't that like we think of an airplane today. No. It was very... Well, you see, that, the C, even the C-47 that I flew at, at the Great Bend unit, it had steel seats, you know, full down seats on the edge, so the paratroopers could sit, on, sit there on the edge. Mm -hmm. But this B-17 didn't have any seats at all? No. No, no, no just it the skin and just... Just a seat for you, one. Just had one seat. How many bombs would you carry in your plane? Well, you'd carry uh, 12,000 pounds, which would be probably 500 pounds would be maybe 60 or would be 30. I had my my uh, radio operator always had a piece of chalk, and he had a message for Hitler on each bomb. Oh, oh <laughs> really? Oh, that's a good story. A message for Hitler on each bomb. And I bet it was a good message. <laughs> <laughs> With a piece of chalk. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you wouldn't want to do it again, but you no, have some I, good I, memories. I, I wonder why I wasn't scared. That's what I... I How come you reviewed yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, Emerson, you, you, you never did stop flying then, did you? No. You guys just... Because you and Dan flew yeah, yeah. for how many years? Well, yeah. yeah. Until we sold our beach... Until uh, our banker yeah, wrecked, the... Wrecked the uh, my, our beach bonanza is yeah. supreme feeders. Uh, I thought of that this morning when I was in the bank. Oh. <laughs> so I had more time, I better mention that to you. <laughs> yeah. But the, when did you know that you, when you went to, on the GI Bill, that you were going to do study law? And you went okay, to that's that. another, another, you want ready for another story? Sure. Uh, and when I was in Munich, I, I was on the loop with the Third Army Headquarters, mm -hmm. and the American Council was there. And uh, I decided then I want to be a foreign ambassador. Oh, okay. And, uh, and so when I went to law school the first year, I took international law. And I want to be that ambassador. And Dr. Davis asked me why I was taking it. I said, it's because I want to be an ambassador. Oh, mm -hmm. And uh, he says, is your dad rich? Oh. Uh, he said that at that time it took three hundred thousand and you better pick the right party. Oh, oh, oh my to become an ambassador. Huh? To become an ambassador. Yeah, yeah right. That just the Even though it's Luxembourg, you know, or some small country. Oh, um, oh, and so then I then I came and I, I make up my mind that I got out of law school, you know, where to go. And I, I didn't have any, any place to go. I didn't want to go to Marion County. I said, all, all I had to do is get free legal advice to all my there friends. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And it's not good to go to your local county yeah. because of that reason. I think I'll tell my nephew that. And he so, said, are you trying to make a living? And, and so you came in as a partner with Harry Lyle. That's right. Well, this it is, was this is opening. appropriate today. Yeah, there's uh, an opening for a county attorney, see? Of course, another part of the story is 
and I, Bill Goss is in law school a year after me. Right. Mm -hmm. And he oh, and, and I asked him, well, Bill, are you, are you going to the Sacramento County? He said, oh, no, I'm going to Florida. Because, uh, but he didn't. <laughs> well, what happened was, let's see, Harry Gray, Howard Gray, I think was his name, was an attorney in Florida. And he was married to a Nagel. Yeah. And they got a divorce the next year, and Bill Goss didn't have a place to go in Florida. <laughs> oh. I have heard that story. Oh. That's <laughs> amazing. Because the, I knew the Gosses because when I worked at Peterson, Peterson, and Goss, Bill... Ed Goss, one of the sons yeah. of Bill, you know. Yeah, but that that's that's the reason why he was really planning to go. Uh, in fact, is I had a lot. Uh, I was up there with Harry Wiles. He had a lot of Nagel books up there, and I would see books yeah. of Howard Gray, attorney, yeah. Yeah, up there. Sure. Uh, now, was he the bald eagle? Yes, Paul Nagel. Yeah, Paul Nagel, but. Gray, was he the bald eagle that they called? No, 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 no. No, that's, that's a different one. Okay. Yeah. okay. As I remember, we had a parade when he came back to town yes. when I was in high school. Wasn't that and Bill? We, was it Bill? Bill they Gray. called him the bald eagle. I yeah, it's, but I'm not sure what, what, what the Bill first name was. was. It could be Howard Jr. No, I think it was Bill. Was it Bill? Okay. I know we marched. <laughs> we waited for him and waited for him, and then we marched. <laughs> well, he was quite a hero. Yeah. Uh, you heard the story where the, the commander of the aircraft carrier made them turn all their engines on and and docked the boat with the wind off the uh, planes on the deck of the uh, aircraft carrier. Yeah, and he ha and Howard was on the big opposition up ahead big opposition to that, which wasn't right. You don't dock a dock a aircraft carrier with the propellers of airplanes sitting on the deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah.